I tell you what, they just don't make nostalgia like they used to. When I was young, our nostalgia was incredible, and it's just not the same anymore. Hey, it's Brock here from Rock Hill Farms. It's time to get serious about getting this hay wagon painted. And I've decided to make it harder on myself by taking these parts off that I could just paint over them. But I think I'll get a much better paint job if I'm spending the money on this high quality paint that's meant to cover this rust. Why paint over these rusty, crusty, stuck bolts? And especially like this channel right here, I can't paint the inside of it, so it's going to just continue to rust. But if I can get these broke loose and get it taken apart, that's going to give me a much better finished product. So I'm going to go around the hay wagon and anywhere that I see a bolt or a nut, it's going to get rust patrol and we're just going to let that soak for a while while I get some other stuff together. While I'm waiting on the rust patrol to soak into those bolts, I went down to the garage and back in the corner with a thousand boxes stacked in front of it, it's my old toolbox from when I worked in manufacturing. And as I open this up, I'm finding all these tools that I didn't know I still had. Like here's a right angle drill adapter, all kinds of cool stuff. But the coolest thing is that I had all these pictures in the lid of the toolbox. And so my 16 year old daughter is right there. Pretty cool to see I had all the most recent pictures of my kids from 12, 13 years ago. And my wife uh, up there in the lid of the toolbox. So it's really neat to have that memory, plus just some of the things I had done to this toolbox. Like it was a Craftsman homeowner toolbox, one of the bigger homeowner ones. And I had a angle iron frame built for it and put huge casters on it so it's more sturdy. Done. Neat little trip down memory lane for me. So I definitely need a toolbox like this up here, but this one's in really rough shape. You can see that the top is bowed down. There's a gap in here. It's got all this rust on it. I need to clean all this up. And basically in between coats of paint and letting things soak on the hay wagon, I'm gonna come over here and work on this. I've got all the drawers emptied out except for there's still some stuff in the lid, but I need to uh, kind of wipe all this down with some rust patrol, spray the drawer slides, get this thing all cleaned up and ready to use. These are probably gonna be a pain. You never know, maybe they'll just pop loose, but. They're square head on both sides, so it's really hard to get extra leverage. Sometimes a larger size 12 point socket will fit a square head, but I'm not sure on sizes with this. So it's hard to get more leverage with the, this is a 5 eighths, which is a weird size. The first three bolts, two here, one here, came out fine. The fourth one broke off when I was trying to turn it. But this should be free and come off now. I think it's worth a little bit of extra time to take these off, paint them separately, get a paint job under them, and get new hardware put on. After fighting all of those bolts on that side out by hand, I found that a 3 quarter inch 12 point socket is a pretty good fit on here. Man, was it worth the time to go find the right socket. To get this rail off, I thought that rail might come off by taking those bolts out, but to get it off, I've got to get these bolts off. And of course, they're giant square heads. And I thought, well, I'll do the same trick. I'll get some big sockets. These sockets go like one inch to two inch and two inch to three inch. I've got them all the way up to four or five inch sockets that I've never used. But these are right up against that wall. Nothing would even fit on there anyway. So these are definitely gonna have to come off by hand. It's like the top of this is a 15 16 and the bottom is a one inch. I did soak these at the same time as the others. In a factory setting, we would have slid this wrench on here and then had a four foot long pipe 
it's like four, three or four inch diameter that slid over the wrench to bust it loose. I was thinking, I have nothing. I've got big breakover bars for sockets, but I've got nothing for a pry bar on this wrench. And that 15 16 will just fit through this inch and three eighths. So we'll see if that gives me the leverage I need. Well, I couldn't find any pipe, and I was about to give up that search. I found this piece of tubing here. It's not super thick wall, but I think it's probably stronger than I can pull. Let's we'll see what we got here. I've been trying to take the, the bolt loose from the top. Let's try the nut. I think, I, I think it turned. Nope. All I did was wiggle the wrench off. I am going to go ahead and try heating this and see if that makes it any easier to get out. I gave up on it and then I said, you know what, let me try one more time on the bottom. And it just moved. Oh, man. Still won't move without the cheater. You know what? So I'm sitting here thinking about it. I have another problem. I've got that to move top and bottom, but I'm a long way from getting it off. But there are two of these bolts right here. There's two on the other side, and there's four down there. I think they're all gonna be the same way. So I can't spend an hour on each bolt. So what I'm thinking is, it's either cut them off or just don't remove them. I think I'm going to move on and see how much luck I have taking the other parts of this apart and then come back to this decision on what to do with these. If I decide to leave those bolts and just, you know, paint up under there, that that's not that big of a deal, but I would really like to separate this. So this is an extendable hay rag wagon. You can change the lengths by taking these bolts out and pushing it in or out. And I'd like to slide all the pieces apart because we have a couple feet of pipe in here that won't be painted if I don't. My original plan was not to do any of this, but figured I've spent this much time on it. Why not try to do it right?
try to heat just the nut this time instead of the bolt because the bolt's not seized into anything except for the nut. So that, heating it with that little torch definitely worked. I didn't know if the one of these small, I think they call them a map torch. I didn't know if they would get hot enough to do the trick or not, but it is. The difference is just, I've got so many of those others, and even after heating it, it was going to be really hard to get them out. Okay, I'm not sure what this one is. It's got a different look to it. What you have basically is two nuts here. The first nut is welded on. The second nut is not. And then you've got a turn screw here. So I've just got to get that nut broke loose. <clears throat> See if the screw's turning with it. The screw is not turning with it. This is when it comes in handy to have a square shaft screwdriver. <sighs> okay. It's a Craftsman screwdriver. It's not like a cheapo brand, but I could see it bending and the screw was not turning. So... Maybe as it gets out to the end, it'll start to force the screw to turn with it. It did. Now the screw's turning with it when it, it wasn't originally. Woo doggy! I've got the back axle separated from the center shaft. It was actually a real hassle because it had a screwdriver slot in a bolt that was sunk, countersunk, and then the nut on the back. And I had the nut, but the way it was set up, there was no way to get a big screwdriver in there and to grip it, and I had to fight with it. This one is a carriage bolt, and it's spinning inside the frame. So this square in this rail is stripped. So I'm going to have to cut it off. I used to have rubber mat across these to protect it and as a soft place so stuff didn't roll off. I thought it would protect it from rust. Then leaving it that way for years, it's completely rusted. Taking all the paint off almost. All right, let's get all the dust residue off this. I've kicked on my fans to clear the dust out of here. Should have been wearing a mask for that. It put off a lot, a lot of rust and dust.
Well, I haven't got as much done as I wanted to. I came out here this morning thinking I was just going to walk out here and start painting this. And then I looked it over and I thought about it for a while and I decided I'd rather disassemble some of it so I get a better paint job. Trying to take the time to do it the right way. And I actually got a delivery today of Pour 15 Cleaner Degreaser that you're supposed to put on before the Pour 15 that I'm using on the hay wagon. And it's a tiny bottle. I was like, what the heck? Why is it such a small bottle? But you delete this four to one and then use it as a cleaner. So it should go a long way. And then I almost decided to put a coat on tonight, but it's about 10 o'clock at night right now. And with my little heater, I've got the shop at 64 degrees. But I don't want it to be too cold whenever I go inside. So I don't want to paint it and shut the heater off and go in. So I think I'm going to wait and try to do... I need to do two coats of paint the same night or the same day on the hay wagon. And then ideally put a paint or a primer over it the same day too. So it really needs to be something where I start painting in the morning. On the toolbox, same story. I wanted to get further with it. I cleaned it all out, cleaned it up, lubricated all the drawer slides, painted up this rusty top, and I was hoping to get some, some of this black rubber mat put on it and then the top put on, but I'm not going to be able to do that because you're supposed to do two coats of the primer and you're supposed to wait 24 hours between coats. So it's going to be two more days before I can have my toolbox in use. But it really was a blast from the past seeing that toolbox that I ate my lunches at that toolbox and stood at it for eight hours a day for a decade. And then it's been moved from garage to storing area to a carport to my basement and never been used as a toolbox the last 10 years. So... I'm excited to have a shop cleaned out enough to put it to use. And I'm really, I'm telling you, the next time you see that hay wagon, it's going to be painted in the video. Anyway, I appreciate you taking time to watch. I'll put links on the screen to a couple more of our videos, and I'll see you next time.